It's a brand new season for the Michelin Le Mans Cup for 2024, a season that began in 2016 with GT3 cars only the following year. Very quickly, LMP3s became part of this championship as well. And it's now uh, fit to bursting because it provides another great stepping stone into championships like the European Le Mans series, which, of course, we're racing in this weekend as well. So on the entry list, at least 38 cars spread across two different categories, GT3, uh, nine of those and a real mixture of manufacturers and 29 LMP3 cars raring to go. Qualifying first, the race is later on today. At, uh, well, it's been put very back very slightly, now scheduled for a 17.50 start time, so 10 to 6, uh, way beyond 7 o'clock, we'll still be racing here at the Barcelona circuit, and I'm delighted to say that every step of the way through the course of the season, it'll be me, Johnny Palmer, and Graham Goodwin, who sits alongside the editor of dailysportscar.com. Fine conditions and a fabulous entry, Graham. There is indeed. Uh, it's looking like it's going to be quite the season. More entries to actually uh, be added as we move through this season. Just taking a quick look here at the Barcelona circuit. This fantastic circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. 4.657 kilometres, six left turns, eight right turns. It'll be an hour and 50 minutes of racing later this afternoon, Johnny. Uh, but it's qualifying to come. And as we know from the Michelin Le Mans Cup, that always provides the action uh, with the non-professional drivers at the wheel what you'll see is improvements through this session and it will be the gt3 cars first i'm just trying to work out Johnny, why on timing and scoring we've lost a car the biogas uh, ferrari not listed at the moment we'll go through some of the uh, travails of this season even thus far when we get to, to track action but uh, Biogas is 23 Ferrari, appears not to be out here for qualifying. So we'll see whether or not we can find out why. Yeah, that's not to do, I think, with the fact that uh, certain cars have gone through timing loops and others haven't because they are all in the pit lane at this stage and only now being released to the working lane of pit road. All of the garage is taken up by European Le Mans series teams, and we have so many of those as well. There's not the garage space, although you will be permitted to use the apron in front, and uh, ELMS teams are told strictly to stay inside the garage for the Le Mans Cup sessions, of which this is uh, the, well, the third, I suppose, after a busy weekend already for these cars. So a couple of free practice sessions leading into 2.15 minutes qualifying sessions and as Graham has mentioned reserved exclusively for the bronze rated driver of which there should be a minimum of one most teams only have one and are joining are joined therefore by either a silver or a gold graded driver by the FIA you're not permitted a platinum in the Michelin Le Mans Cup but you can go as high as gold okay and that's all where cars the to overtake really the stopped car after at the exit of SMR the please proceed to the pit lane proceed to the pit lane so that's the late uh, instruction to head to pit road from the immediate assembly area. The paddock for these cars, the Le Mans Cup, are based, uh, is based further back a couple of rows away from the main trucks and trailers of the European Le Mans series. Okay, well, one minute to start the session. One minute to start the session. Please proceed to the pit lane. Proceed to the pit lane. All GT3 cars to go directly to pit exit. So the instruction rather suggests that you won't be able to start All the cars team. delaying Although the start of this session at the exit that. of the assembly area will be reported to the stewards. So this is LMP3 cars to their pit stall. Yes. GT3 cars to pit exit. And a 30 seconds to start the session. 30 seconds to start the session. So we're about to go green. We'll tell you that it will be, by the look of things, seven GT3 cars to start this session. Sadly, no Blackthorn Aston Martins here in Barcelona. Some logistical difficulties of that team mean that they will make a late start to the season. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Qualifying for GT3 cars has started. Pit exit is green. The dots of tones of. Borsier, our race director for the Michelin Le Mans Cup this season. A familiar voice to sports car racing fans after fulfilling that uh, role as well for the Asian Le Mans series earlier this uh, this year. And 
uh, problems with number 74 Kessel Ferrari, by the way. Looked like that car had not got uh, rolling. This, though, Johnny, is the new look in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. For okay, the remind Danes. drivers of track limits. Remind drivers of track limit. Yeah, Cecilia Martin, who's done an awful lot of racing on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, whether they be in that be in NLS races or more principally in the 24 hours of the Nürburgring, and joined by Karen Gaillard, who brings experience from the 24H Series uh, Championship, quite a lot of that with a team known as Vortex, with their very snazzy-looking Vortex 1.0, and then moving on to the 2.0 as well, but also has experience of GT3 cars and looking to improve upon that as well. So Karen is the silver, it'll be Celia Martin who we see in the as the bronze driver in that number 83 Iron Danes Lambeau. Sounding glorious as uh, so often the V10 does, whether it be in the Audi R8, of which we have one of those as well, the Stella Motorsport LMS and the Lamborghini. So many Ferraris as well. As you look down the entry list, it's every, it's literally every other car. The 12 Kessel, the 23 Biogas, which are question marks over at this stage. The 51 AF Corsa, uh, the Kessel Racing 74, and there's another AF Corsa number 88 as well. The 296s have really made a presence in the championship this year. They have indeed fantastic looking car. Uh, the Spanish car, the uh, Biogas uh, Ferrari, only managed one lap in the three practice two, and I do wonder whether or not there might be a technical issue for that car. Did not have a chance this morning to get down to the Le Mans Cup paddock, but uh, we have two of those Ferraris the back around the unmistakable form of the Audi R8 from Stella Motorsports, previous champions in the British GT Championship of course in GT4 with the GT4 version of the Audi R8. A road car, by the way, which went out of production just last month. And uh, we'll fly the flag for Audi at this level. And it will be Alex Acker, by the way, in qualifying. Alex, uh, amongst other things, team principal, team owner of Attempto Racing. So, yep. another part of the Audi racing family. With such fantastic results over, what is it now? Uh, it's more than a decade and a half of GT3 racing for Audi. High class racing, it's a familiar car, familiar number, familiar colours, Johnny, but a different team for this car. Team Parker racing last season, but the Porsche now taken under the wing and under the awning of high class racing. Nick Jones aboard that car. Joined as he was last year with, uh, by uh, Scott Mulvert. So the two Brits with a similar, as you say, livery from last year, but uh, completely different uh, initiative behind it. And here's an example then of one of many Ferrari 296s in the order, the AF Corsa number 88 machine with its red and yellow, looking a little bit JMW actually from the from European the Le Mans series. From the back, it's, uh, from the front, looks very kind of factory. True. Custodio Toledo aboard the number 88 car. Uh, we'll tell you, by the way, the number 74 Kessel Racing car did manage to get out of the track and is now circulating. Comes up from the uh, of course, a garage. Free practice one was topped by the 74 Ferrari. That was a Fran Ruda time, not permitted in this session, but the Spaniard was quickest because, of course, in free practice, you can use whichever driver you wish to set a quick time. And then in the second session, in the more recent session, that was also topped by a couple of Ferraris, and it was the 74 again for Fran Ruda, quicker than Agostini in the number 88. So Ricardo Agostini, the gold, but joined by Custodio Toledo, as you say, driving in this session. Um, Fred Chose has set the initial time, but what we tend to find in these uh, Michelin Le Mans Cup qualifying sessions is that far from the quickest time being set early, generally the whole session is required because the times become really tumbling down all the way through to the chequered flag. Yeah, at the moment it is a Kessel 1-2, Fred, uh, Frederick, as you say, ahead of Andrew Gilbert, uh, Gilbert rather. Uh, Matthew Kuzajewski in yet another Ferrari, and then it's a 1-2-3-4 for Ferrari with Custode uh, Toledo in fourth. So it's two Kessel cars, two AF Corsa cars, then Darren Malkin in the Audi, Nick Jones, who I believe is the only driver in this session carried over from last season. 
Okay. And Celia Martin at the moment getting up to speed in the Lamborghini. This new Ferrari 296 GT3, quite the weapon. We will be seeing this car in its LM GT3, subtly different version of the car. And the European Le Mans is qualifying, which is next up on track after this. Yes, this is very much the global GT3 category, which we see racing all the way around the world. And when the regulations are brought out for things like balance of performance at the start of a race meeting, you have the car listed together with its homologation number in the global GT3 category. Um, what I haven't done is to check whether how it's listed for European Le Mans Series and indeed for the World Endurance Championship, but there are, as you say, big differences. So that becomes a category known as LM. GT3. Yep. It's a popular suffix, but we have to make sure we include the LM bit as well. Indeed, it's uh, all change. It's the two AF Corsa cars at the top now. Matthew Kuzajewski goes to the top in the number 51 car. It's the 88 AF Corsa car in the hands of Custodio. Uh, Toledo goes second. Darren Malkin had briefly been third in the Stella Motorsport Audi, but that's now gone the way of Frederick Jusset. The number 12 Kessel racing car. Sylvia Martin improves to fifth in this splendid pink and white. Iron Dames Lamborghini. Two more names to add to a growing roster of female talent in the Italian squad. They'll be racing as well in a Porsche in the European Le Mans series. There's another Lamborghini in the World Endurance Championship. So many facets to this programme now, including rally and equestrian competition for the on-dames. Karting squad as well, single-seated at junior level. This, though, is our second fastest car of the session so far. But what can Custodio Toledo do? And the answer is he can take provisional pole position halfway through the session now, Johnny. And he goes to the top with a 141.922. I wonder whether Matthew Kozajewski might be able to extract a bit more out of the lap time. He was done for track limits last time around, so the middle sector means that that lap effectively doesn't count. But uh, 144.3, the last lap he did, he's capable of a 142.795, needs to find the best part of nine tenths to be back on an even keel with Custodio Toledo. But it's the two AF Corsa Ferraris first and second from another nine, 296 which is Andrew Gilbert in the Kessel example. And the Audi from Stella Motorsport, driven by Darren Malkin, fourth fastest after a 143.6. Yep, improving on this lap is Darren in this splendid looking and sounding V10. 5.2 litre V10. Audi R8. So he's got a massive part of the GT3 racing story these cars have been won just about everything and everywhere. Great to have an Audi on this grid. All relatively calm down in pit road at this stage because the drivers have had their two bouts of free practice and it's now all on these bronze graded drivers then who may be new to the track, certainly new potentially to uh, a Ferrari 296 in this example. Although we are now into the second year of them being eligible for GT3 competition, we must remember. Custodio Toledo already fastest. Is he about to improve again? It's a 141.922, and that's not an improvement, but he got very, very close to it. 142.0, so only just a second away from his best. Potential here for Celia Martin to make a big jump up the order was right there after the first sector has dropped to a number of tenths in sector two, but significantly quicker than we've seen the Iron Dame uh, as she comes into this final sector and round the last fi final couple of turns. Can she trouble the upper orders here? I think she can. Stays within track limits, comes beneath the grandstand. Well filled today, by the way. Goes third. Excellent, Excellent effort, yeah. So uh, someone who's got some TCR experience and uh, more saloon cars, but getting more and more used to a more potent and thoroughbred machine in the Lamborghini Huracan and Celia Martin up to third position. She may not be done there yet either. With still four minutes and 45 seconds still to go. Leapfrogging Darren Malkin and Andrew Gilbert in their Stella Audi and Kessel Racing Ferraris respectively. 
Still got to get a little closer, though, to Custodio to Toledo and Matthew Kurzajewski in their AF Corsa 296s. So four and a half minutes to go. They, of course, are one two. I'm Dames Lamborghini. So they, of course, are Ferraris, of course. Lamborghini, third. Kessel Ferrari, Stella Motorsport Audi, the second Kessel Ferrari, and then High Class Racing's Nick Jones in the solo Porsche. Across the line. No improvement there for the professional pole setter, Custodio Toledo, watching behind. And it is an improvement by Matthew Kuzajewski. 21 thousandths of a second is the gap now, Johnny. Very, very narrow indeed. And you, you would imagine that these two, two Ferraris are set up uh, pretty similarly for two bronze-rated drivers. There will be little differences here and there between the two driving styles. But Toledo, who has heritage from Brazil as well, but been doing a lot of his racing in North America, coming out of GT4 last year in the AM and Pro-AM, categories to Lado, 21 thousandths of a second faster than his teammate. And at the moment, we've got four cars up on the pole time after their first sectors on their current lap. It is the two top place cars at the moment. Castelio Toledo is about a tenth up on his previous best. Matthew Kozajewski is up by a few thousandths. Andrew Gilbert in the currently fourth place Kessel car up as well and up well up over a tenth up. What can they do in the very technical Second sector here. Also up Celia Martin. So this track is getting quicker, Johnny. Yeah. More and more Michelin rubber being laid down on the track surface, which will make it slightly grippier. Also, the ambient temperature is building. And the track temperature even hotter than that. I noticed it was in the mid-35 degrees Celsius yesterday, and that was after a, a long day of running and possibly the real peak of the track starting to ebb away slightly. It'll be getting warmer uh, till about 1, 2 o'clock. Two and a half minutes to go. Castelia Toledo will not be improving on this uh, this lap. He's dropped quite a lot of time. I think has dropped a couple of wheels off and has lost time in the second sector. Kozajewski though goes quicker, halves the gap. It is one hundredth of a second for pole. Celia, Ma Celia Martin still to come through here. She may well close the gap again. Andrew Gilbert uh, is now fourth quickest. Celia Martin back up to third. Jones finding time is at the foot of the timing and scoring at the moment, but finding time he does improve by about a second and a half on that lap. Here comes Celia Martin. No improvement for the Iron Dane. Still a 142.466, but it's been finding time through this session, Johnny. Pretty much everybody improving on that one particular lap, as you pointed out, including Nick Jones. So there is chance for the slowest car so far in the session to get a lot closer to that pole time held by Custodio Toledo for AF Corsa. And just 0.010 of a second now between these two near identical AF Corsa Ferrari 296s. Here's Kurzajewski trying to shave a one hundredth of a second off his lap time in order to move from one side of the grid to the other and be on pole position in this GT3 field. A confirmation, by the way, the biogas Ferrari engine problems for them. They will, I'm afraid, not race. This is their home track. Hopefully we'll see them at Paul Ricard next month. Celia Martin a bit further back. Here she is uh, improving again through the first sector, has gone blue. And on the expected time by the end of the lap is actually up on both of the two Ferraris as well. Whether she can carry that through, just lost a smidge of a second though. She can get in amongst them here. Oh, to totally, yeah. A good, clean, tidy, rapid third sector. So See. that's the slight rise between turns. 12 and 13, we bypassed the chicane as we did last year. Someone's been off just in front of her with a load of gravel dust and remains off. That's a, one of the two Ferraris. Thankfully, she jumps just in front of it and can continue the momentum, but it's not quite enough to bag a front row start as the chequered flag is now out. Now, which of the Ferraris, many of them, had the spin? It was a full spin as well. The 12 Kessel car. Car 12 being driven by Frederic Jose, who 
began the pace, actually, at the Good. start of the 15-minute session, but that was a lurid spin. Did incredibly well to keep it mainly out of the gravel, and Celia Martin kept the foot in. Uh, did improve, 142.366 will be her best time of the session, but it's still not quite good enough to get in amongst, as you put it, the 2A, of course, of Ferraris in front. Indeed. She's still going quickly, you know. She's on another flying lap and still going very quickly. The gaps are still tiny through the first and second sectors. It was rather nip and tuck as to when the chequered flag came out, and I thought maybe she'd already seen it, but that's not being displayed no, on our not. screen. So the 83 will uh, be able to extract another lap out of this, as has everybody else in the session, in fact. Estelia Toledo could improve his lead here. Doesn't do that. It is still a flat 100 of a second, and that means that Matthew K uh, uh, Kuzajewski goes to pole position. Snatches it by 66 thousandths of a second just at the point where the chequered flag is now being shown to absolutely everybody. So it came out to greet no one leaving turn 14. And almost a full lap later, Matthew Kurzajewski crossing the line for 141.8. The only time, well, no, two, two made it sub 142, but he, crucially, is in the 141.8. And then somebody else very, very wide coming out of turn 14 as well. And there's another 296. Uh, which will have a slow final sector across the line, dropping a couple of tyres in the gravel trap. But the 2A, of course, the teammates switch places at the death there on the grid for today's race. Kurzajewski should start from Paul alongside Custodio Toledo, who set the pace for the majority of the session. So those two cars, those two drivers, both rookies in the Michelin Le Mans uh, Cup will be the front row starters with an improvement at the end, by the way, from Darren Malkin he grabs fifth for Stella Motorsport and the Audi, Nick Jones also got, didn't quite get it amongst them but he's on the train now, it's about 1.5 seconds from pole to the back of the field in qualifying so there was pace there to be found, and that was a relatively clean and tidy Seven car grid for GT3. Things are about to change, Johnny, out there. Do you think? Just a touch. We're going to up the entry numbers, certainly, by a, a significant chunk. Times that by about three. Four. 29, I think we've got. Um, well, yeah, so I was doing I was doing three times nine, that's 27, but it's actually three times eight, isn't it? So call it three and a half. Anyway, two AF Corsa Ferraris uh, will be first and second, separated by 66 thousandths of a second, and it's uh, Kurzajewski outpacing his teammate Toledo on the final lap of his session from Celia Martin's Iron Dames, number 83. Andrew Gilbert, Kessel Racing, fourth ahead of... Darren Malkin in the Stella Motorsport Audi. Fred Chausse, despite the spin, finished sixth fastest in his Kessel Racing uh, Ferrari as well. And Nick Jones in the Porsche from High Class Racing will start from seventh. The 51 car makes his way down pit lane. Looked as if he was waiting to be called into the scrutineering bay. Um, but that is shown back to the paddock at the moment the route to the back of the paddock where the Michelin Le Mans Cup cars are um, berthed. For those here that are aware of events earlier in the weekend and are wondering why we're not mentioning that, that will be recognised later this afternoon. That is a pretty full grandstand, Johnny. I'm very impressed. Beautifully sunny day here. Traditionally extraordinarily good value to come to a European Le Mans series race and that doesn't always translate into full grandstands But in this era of sports car racing in its pomp mm. Here they come and they are very very welcome Yeah, the uh, there always seems to be a very special following in this part of the world I think it's partly the nature of the track being very close to Barcelona City Centre and with investment uh, even very recently, something like 50 million euros to uh, bring the track up to scratch. And uh, there's a, a lot of building work taking there place is. here this weekend, funded by the regional government. So that's the reason why Barcelona is now in the title of the track as well, the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya. And also, great public transport links. Not always the case for uh, tracks of this magnitude, but uh, you were telling me earlier, railway station just at the bottom of the hill. There it is. I don't know whether it's open today, but uh, trains are pretty frequent, nevertheless. Just the other side of that giant grandstand that overlooks the start-finish line 
and the again pit buildings which look like they're in uh, kind of their normal state but check out the story above and some of that as well is being extended and added to the grandstand at turn 10 will have a roof on it by the end of all of this work all scheduled to be finished by the weekend of the 23rd of june that's the weekend after the 24 hours of le mans which is when the Spanish Grand Prix rolls into town. One of the number of additions to the grid this year, the number 99 car from More Motorsport. That is a father and son effort. High class racing enter the Michelin de Mans Cup with an LMP3 car under their own name for the first time. We've already seen this effort in the Asia Le Mans series this year. And there's another first timer in LMP3. We saw their Audi a little earlier, send the fielding it was aboard the Audi last year. Well, he is the pro driver for Stella Motorsports entry into LMP3, one of three Duquesnes against an absolute fleet of Ligiers. Tim Kresic, uh, well, he, if I remember rightly, was in a high-class Porsche last year. Yep. He's now an inter-Europol uh, Ligier. Things moving on. Yeah, well, very often after a season in, perhaps, GTs, then uh, some GT drivers want instead to experience the higher speeds and uh, greater stickability the aero of the lmp3s but the hcr with caffeine sinks six porsche that finished third in last year's championship was tim's ride on that occasion and he moves up to the the quickest class breton racing here with a pair of ligiers this one in the kind of breton livery it is a czech team by the way the other car the 62 car a spectacular livery uh, an homage, I think, to the 2019 Art Car livery from Rebellion Racing. You won't miss that when you see it. And it is RHGP, and they 85 Duquesne at the front of the field, and it's headed a couple of the sessions so far this week, Johnny. And that's a single-seater. There you go. Hello, Florence. Daddy loves you. Well, RHGP, yeah, bringing great pedigree from single-seater action, Formula 3 around Europe and it will be fascinating to see how their car prep adapts to this very different uh, class of racing and also the race management too because there'll be traffic there's a pit stop part way through the one hour and 50 minute race there's a driver change to be done um, in fact uh, all sorts of things to be done during the minimum pit stop reference time uh, stop so everyone will have to stop for two minutes and 45 seconds during the race later this evening uh, await the trigger of Lamborghini's call to start the session. That will, by the way, be Florence Falvey. I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure that was uh, Jamie Falvey. Uh, Falvey, sorry, aboard the 44 Team Virage car. It will be the last year, by the way, Johnny, that the Michelin Le Mans Cup across the field. We experience this soundtrack. This is the last year for the Nissan V8 in LMP3 in international competition. After that, Orica will roll out a new twin-turbo V6 based on a Toyota unit, I understand. We started with the 5-litre lump from Nissan. That was then uprated to something like 5.6, but with that extra cubic capacity came a bit more fuel burn, and that's the reason why these used to be two-hour races, but one hour 50 is now the uh, expected distance that you can do on a tank of fuel followed by another tank of fuel and you can get to just shores of the two hour mark safely edict sports and their spectacular liveried uh, ligier matching the ligier of the red mp2 car the european le mans series and carrying the famous le mans winning colors of matra a proud french brand our Icelandic entry is back one of the few that is if you like untouched by time back with on goodmanson who'll be in the uh, the car for this session and Colin Noble and this is GG classic cars nothing literally nothing to do with me I'm not sure folks yeah but it'll be George Nakas it is uh, UK based but Australian flagged I think the team they so are it's a, it's a very strong Aussie feel to it the number two car here from CD Sports and Sarkisian will be aboard this car the cherry red and yellow colours that come CD Sport have often carried these, Ten, but it's Michael nine, Jensen's colours, actually. Eight, I think he's the owner of the seven, car. Six, five, four, three, two, one. LMP3 qualifying session has started. Please remind drivers of track limits. Ben Borsier has been practising hard 
to see how close he can get to uh, Eduardo Freitas uh, counting down skills in evil villain style. He's getting there. It's, there's a way to go, yeah, but he has got a whole season, I suppose, to uh, really hone those skills. Gwen Borsier used to menace. be a, tr a team manager in Formula E, so he will know, you know how, to, how to approach one of these races from a team manager's perspective, yep. know potentially all the little tricks that are played as well. So, theoretically, should be a step ahead of all those, but um, we'll wait and see. He'll be enjoying cars that are a bit pacier in this, uh, in this session as well. that's fair comment. Yeah into the right-hander at turn four which marks the start of the middle sector around this 4.6 kilometer circuit three sectors as you might expect from the start line round two just into the braking area for turn four then the long and technical middle sector which the cars are entering now heading downhill into that awkward braking zone for turn seven and then on the exit of seven you squirm your way through turn eight that little right-hander very fast approach and mid-corner speed at turn nine, heading underneath what will be, I understand, a new access and footbridge, which is just in sort of skeleton Meccano type form at this stage, just underneath where our camera is framed. But we may get other views of it through the course of the weekend. And the braking area for last year's reprofiled turn 10 is the final sector. So that's relatively short, but where you can gain a great deal of time through 12, 13, 14, the three right-handers that end the lap. There's already some shuffling taking place as the cars have worked their way out of pit road and trying to find a natural order out on the racetrack. Trying to gain ground there was the 67 of Peter de Curtens, so the returning colours of Hegley by T2 Racing adorning again a Duquesne. Yeah, 28 cars then, all out on circuit. And... There's barely a bit of empty track for them to stretch their legs here, so it's going to be about where you can squeeze the pace. We expect to see some very close times indeed here, Johnny. And so often it is about who is left running out on the racetrack for the longest to be able to see the chequered flag and effectively extend the session by as much as possible. To give you an idea, free practice one, you might mention this, Ares GP fastest for Fabian Michel and Adrian David, and then Rinaldi Racing topped the second free practice session for Steve Paro, but it will have been a Daniel Kylevitz time, a 157.594. The first of the two free practice sessions was actually faster for the car that leads this little trio, Ares GP. Yeah, Tim Kresic making it clear to the number 85 car that he th feels he's quicker and should go by here. But uh, RSGP's Fabio Michel having none of that at the moment. We wait to see where this pace is going to emerge. It's not about how quick they're going to be right now, it's how that pace emerges over. But it's still almost 12 minutes, plus, of course, any lap they're on. And the uh, time elapses. Jamie Falvey back in the session. I'm not sure whether that was a quick dive to the pit lane or whether the 44 was late to he join was, the he session. Was, he was the final car out the pit lane. Okay. Yeah. So maybe sensibly, just waiting for the madness as cars join the session in one big group and hold back because that should potentially give you a bit of track space as well. So Jamie Falvey may be one to keep our eyes out for as well. Where has he emerged? on the racetrack. Yeah, there is a bit of clear air in between him and the next car. And actually, he'll have to up the pace a touch in the 44 because there is a risk he'll be caught by these three that we're concentrating on. We'll flip to some other cars, of course, now, but 85 uh, is the fastest for Fabian Michel and leads that trio coming out of turn four. Meanwhile, the Team Tour car is at turn 10 and very slow coming out of that corner. Again, this might be to try for Auden Goodmanson to buy himself some track space. There does seem to be life in the car. It was quite close to number two. I think that's yeah. exactly what he's done. Yeah, so again, allowing those in front to just ebb away slightly. We might. We're about to get a message then from Gwen, but uh, we'll concentrate, stay concentrated on the action. So it's two Duquesnes setting the pace in the early stages, separated by 0.221 of a second. Fabian Michal for RHGP and Peter de Curtens for Hegeli by T2 Racing. The best of the Ligiers is Tim Kresic in the Inter-Europol competition number 43. 
But as I say that, Steve Parrow will now split the two Duquesnes for Rinaldi Racing. So Parrow to second in car 66, and he was only a tenth of a second away. But oh, all of trouble. a sudden, more changes, and yes, the 17 car is off. That's at the end of the short straight between turn four and five, and we go immediately red flags. We do. Patrice Lafargue, who's off and did so by himself, I think, here. Yeah, lost it early, didn't he? Under breaking down the hill. Car just, rear end just got away from him. And that's in line of attack down that hill. There would be no risk taken. Under 10 minutes to go. The clock has stopped, Johnny. Yes, as we would expect in a qualifying session, unlike free practice, where if it's an hour long or 40 minutes long, then the clock just continues to tick by. So at least time is paused, but of course, it's going to take time to get the cars back out into the session once it goes green again, and you don't get that time back, the extra installation or rolling lap that will be required. So Fabian Michel, fastest. The other thing that took my attention away from the spin into turn five was that the gaps all of a sudden were less than a second, then stretched back out to four seconds, and now we're back to 2.2, the gap that separates Fabian Michel from Tim Kresic. So I wonder whether the Steve Paro time that we thought took him second was then actually deleted because of track limits potentially. So the Rinaldi car is still well and truly up there because Steve Parrow's second fastest time is good enough for that, but he's from a tenth or so away from Fabian Michel, he's now more like four seconds away. So we've got two truly pacey times at the moment, well in, uh, well under the 140s. If you stretch away after that, something like a 20 seconds uh, spread across the field, but that, that session had not really come together before we got the red flag. Fabi Michel from Tim Kresic, Steve Paro, Peter de Curtins, Christian Short, Jamie Falvey, the late starter to the session, or the last starter to the session. Clement Moreno, saw earlier in the uh, Leisure European Series. Andrew Ferguson, Julian Lemoyne, and Roman Ineta, a veteran driver in sports car racing. That's your top ten. Two of the three Duquesnes there, including the fastest time of the session so far from Fabien Michel in the RSGP car. Peter de Curtins, the third, in the hands of Sylvain Guintoli, is 15th. That's the Stella Motorsport car. Quite the story for Sylvain. So Sylvain, who made his debut in a one-off in the uh, GT3 Audi last year, is starting a journey. He's the, I think, 2014 World Superbike Champion, has two wins in the 24 Hours Moto race, which is an Endurance World Championship round um, at the Le Mans circuit, on the Bugatti circuit, and is starting a journey to seek to be a winner on two and four wheels at uh, 24 Hour Races at Le Mans. Superb. Well, that is something definitely to keep our eyes upon. And uh, you can say that you saw him racing in the early stages of his Le Mans dream in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. And uh, with prototype experience, which will prove crucial later on in that journey as the 85 car comes in then. Fabian Michel during this red flag. Others, though, deciding to stay in the fast lane to get a good place in the queue. So Michel, a 136.344, good enough to be 2.3 seconds clear of the rest of the field. Tim Kresic bringing, obviously, his car down pit lane as well. I didn't spot whether he went to the team or whether he stayed in the fast lane. The 17, though, losing it all on its own. There's a, an important change of direction that needs to take place coming out of Turn 4 to set the car up then for the ideal racing line into Turn 5. And uh, maybe that change of direction or maybe just a bit too eager on the brakes has resulted in that moment for Patrice Lafargue in the Matra liveried Edex Sport car, number 17. Stella, though, will be reasonably pleased with their early efforts in this session. Didn't really get into their full stride for Sylvain Guintoli. So currently 15th fastest for Sylvain. And he has Alexander Bikantsov, Shahan Sarkissian, and Jens Moller up ahead for Inter Europol, CD Sport and High Class Racing. But the high rotation of potential pole sitters will continue just as soon as Patrice Lafargue's car has been safely moved out of the way. Of course, 
with this being a qualifying session and the cause of the red flag being car 17, that will not be permitted to continue within the qualifying session. Indeed, 24 degrees I see out there, 38 degrees track temperature and coming up rapidly, by far the warmest we've seen this week. Quite chilly the start of the week for the European Le Mans Series prologue. Uh, these cars have already had a full day of track action on Wednesday um, with the Michelin Le Mans Cup having their pre-season prologue test early in the week. But uh, everybody raring to go, Johnny, for the season follows the European Le Mans series at all rounds bar one. I don't think they're at Mugello, are they? But they do, of course, get the two sprint races on the full circuit at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, including this season uh, after the centenary uh, displays last year uh, back onto race morning. So there will be a massive crowd to watch this field. It's a pretty big crowd here to watch it today. Yeah. No, uh, looking mightily impressive and uh, exciting times. They actually do go to Mugello. It must be the first Italian race, therefore, Imola, that they miss. So, yes, uh, they get the trip to Tuscany at the end of September. That uh, September date has traditionally been actually the Spa visit for the European Le Mans Series yep. and the Michelin Le Mans Cup. So that's switch places. We go to Spa as round four with the ELMS. It'll be race five for the Michelin Le Mans Cup after we've been to Paul Ricard next month, right at the start of May. Those two races as part of the road to Le Mans, as you say, one traditionally midweek and one Saturday morning of the race itself. And then to Belgium, to Italy and to Portugal to finish the season in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. Green flag waves, time starts to tick by, but as I say, you can't do anything until you've been released from the pit lane and come all the way around this 4.6 kilometer circuit. So. No doubt about it, it's made a dent into what should have been a 15-minute session. Indeed. So who can gather themselves and go again? Well, this is a fully bronze-rated field in qualifying. It is mandatory to use your bronze driver. These drivers, hugely important. Two reasons. They've got to be quick as they can. They've got to be as consistent as they're as free as they possibly can. But the other thing, and it's worth mentioning it, without these guys, we would not be here. These are usually the guys funding this effort. Pro-Am, of course, not exclusively, but very often, it is their funding that is the reason why they, the car, the other driver, and all the men and women in the paddock are here and competing. So very much a strong point of the modern era of sports car racing. In the steps on the ladder, the Pro-Am side of things is a huge numerical and financial contributor to the health of the sport and enables a very large number of professionals, professional drivers and team members to Stay in the sport, develop their skill sets, and many, many of them making their way up onwards and upwards into the upper echelons of sports car racing and elsewhere. So RSGP have not rejoined this session. They are currently 2.3 seconds to the good here, Johnny. Yeah, that's got to be part of the thinking, hasn't it? I yeah. mean, it, it will take a great deal to leapfrog Fabian Michel's excellent effort. He's still in the car and, you know, on standby for a short call should he be required to rejoin the session. So if things change at the sharp end, I'm sure they'll be straight back out again with RHGP, but again, bringing a different style of uh, how to approach this qualifying session from a team principally from a single-seater background. Would say that they're going to be quite careful with that tactic because how many times have we seen things change and change dramatically on the very last lap, Indeed. in which case there's no time to respond. They've sort of got to be out there ready to respond, and maybe we'll see them just take a bit of a break, find a break in the traffic, and there are a couple of quite large breaks in this traffic, and circulate there, ready to pounce, should they need to do so. Plenty of cars going more quickly than they have gone before on this lap. This is the first flyer for the majority of the field, since the red flag came out. Tim Kresic is going more quickly, significantly more quickly. He's the closest at the moment with completed lap times. 
But it is Jens Reyla Muller that goes to second place in the timing and scoring. High class racing up to second and only half a second back. I think you're going to see that 85 car rolling. The other reason they'll be doing that is because the tyre allocation actually spans from the start of free practice yep. all the way through qualifying and to the race as well. And in LMP3, you only get three sets of tyres, 12 in total. Now, there's scope through the course of the year to get an extra two, but that's not two every meeting, that's two through the year, known as joker tyres. So they want to try and restrict, certainly, the amount of mileage you put on that, that particular set of tyres so that they're good for the race, but it is a dangerous game to be playing. I think you'll see that car back on track very soon. Romano Ricci, by the way, uh, goes up to third quickest in the number 13M racing car. The car and racing the team of Ivan Muller, of course, long-time favourite, hugely successful in touring car racing, but has Quite a lot of heritage in running sports cars too. Tim Kresic pops back up into third. Yeah, Times so are closing in here. Two, two of the inter-Europol competition cars, the two, of, in the entry, are in the top four and ready to pounce potentially to the front row, especially as Fabien Michel's R race and, and provisional pole sitting car remains in the pit lane. So Jens Moller keen to try and eat into that half a second that he can as much as possible, but Tim Cresset and Alexander Bukantsov certainly waiting in the wings. No sign yet of any movement from the RSGP car, and if they're going to do it, we see a bit of a spin there for... That is the number 27 car, it used to be 24-7 Motorsport, that car. Now runs under a different team name, P4 Racing, Andrew Ferguson it was. Yep, and still shown has stopped on the racetrack. I think he's got going yep. again now, but uh, with delay. Oscar Pitar pops up into third slot with the Team Virage number 59. Ben Stone with a good time as well to take him initially sixth, although he drops to seventh. Christophe Lapierre, I think, jumping ahead in the racing spirit of Le Mans entry. That's the Le Mans associated with Lake Geneva, by the way, Lac, Lac Le Mans, as it's known in French, rather than anything to do with the 24 hours of Le Mans. Florence's dad, Jou, <laughs> Jamie, Falvey, pops up and he's just a tenth back from the RSGP. If they're going to respond, it's now, because they need to be out on track to complete that lap. And it was a purple final sector from Jamie Falvey as well. Excellent effort from the number 44 Team Virage driver. We're hearing in our ears that Steph, from Steph Wentworth, our pit lane reporter, and much more from her through the course of the weekend, that Fabian Michel is now on the move. There and he the is. GP car back into the session with their Duquesne at Turn 1. So 85 feeling the heat a little more to make sure that uh, the time and the pole position is retained. There is a point on this, remember, as well. Remember, Jimmy Falvey, by the way, has got Falvey, by the way, has gone through purple in the first sector. Against Greta Muller, he closes the gap. He's just two tenths off the provisional pole time. Improvements from Oscar Pitar, from James Swetnam as well. Christoph Lapierre, he's improved. They're all within a second, as is Orden Goodmanson and Adrian Chiller. So the top eight cars separated by less than a second and more to come in this session two and a half minutes to go it's a poor middle sector from Jamie Falvey I think he's had a moment there yeah it's cost him about five seconds through the middle part of the lap Oscar Bittar on the other hand is rocking and rolling very nicely in the number 59 car has just done his best time of the session so far which is a 136.8 for Bittar Swetnam's not that far away Fabian Michel looking to heat these tyres up again. Now, is this another set of tyres? But he has got a clear track ahead of him, and this will be... He might get two laps out of this. Yeah. Well, has done by far the fewest laps to date, four of them in total, whereas those stacking up behind him on the timing screen are up to lap seven and about to complete lap eight. The he next will time get two laps. The line. But we have got and multiple cars up on the pole time on their current time laps, including Jens Greiner Muller, including Jamie Falvey, they're second and third, but in the opposite order that, that I've just read, and Christian Short, too, has gone through on schedule to beat that lap time if he can carry through the pace for the remainder of the lap he's on. 
So looking out for improvements, and there wasn't one for Jens Moller, despite that green time, that blue time, if you prefer, through sector one, the purple time through sector two. He was a tad slower through sector three and remains in third position for high-class racing. Jamie Falvey will represent a real threat, though, for those associated with RHGP. Fabian Michel back in the session. And now we're hearing that Andrew Ferguson is under investigation for what happened at Turn 1. He, well, spun, he had that spin. He spun and did not use the escape road to rejoin. That would be what that is. That was an instruction made clear to all the teams if you have problems at Turn 1. Stop some of the problems we've had here before. Jim Swetland has pitted the 87 car. He will finish no better than the fifth. Oscar Bittar going quickly. There is no improvements for Jamie Falvey, for Jens Grainer Moller, for Christian Short. 24 seconds to go in this session and the 85 car I don't think is going to need to improve here Johnny well we have seen some better times from the 42 Sylvain Guintoli car which is Stella Motorsports entry Shahan Sharkissian finding time as is George Nakas in the GG Classics car and Horst Feldermeyer car number 50 up to 19th fastest but what we're not seeing is any improvement from Jamie Falvey sitting in second Jens Moller third Oscar Bittar fourth have they in fact extracted all the best time out of that set of tyres already cars much quicker than they have been in sector one but sector two seems to be a problem here whether that's traffic whether or not there's gravel on the road don't know but they are losing chunks of time in sector two Stefan Oust in his Rinaldi racing car doing a 138.4 doesn't quite get him into the top 20 Adrian Schiller crossing the line now for cool racing and Adrian in the number 87 car 97 car that was an improvement but only didn't see the checkered really. flag as well though so yep. he won't get another stab at it that's eighth quickest for Adrian Schiller so it looks to be Fabian Michel at the moment from Jamie Falvey. Falvey. Jan, Jens Greener Muller and Oscar Bittar third and fourth at the moment. Still a few cars to cross the line. No major improvements seem to be underway at the moment. The RHGP team. Well, it takes something in any formula to come and set a pole position on your debut. Adrian David there in the background behind his engineers and mechanics also beginning to allow the smile to spread across his face because there's no one else on the racetrack who's going to be quicker than the 85. They won't even need to complete this lap. They put possibly a bit more tyre wear on the this set of tyres than they would have wished. But that's how serious they saw the threat from Jamie Falvey's Team Virage car number 44 and Jens Moller in the 20 high-class machine. Oscar Bittar, the other Virage 59 entry as well that was there or thereabouts, but uh, just couldn't lay the time down. I think part of that was the fact we had a red flag part yeah. of the way through, and that really did break the rhythm for a lot of other cars in the entry. Well, uh, managed to set that pole position time, by the way, with none of the purple sectors. It was first and third sector quickest for the third pl second place in the order Team Virage car, against Bruno Moller, setting the fastest middle sector, but it was just a consistently quick lap that got pole position for the number 85 RSGP Duquesne. At the time of setting it, it absolutely did have the three purple sectors because that's shown once the car reaches the pits, but you're right, then after that, times were improved upon. It's a 136.344, though, for Fabian Michel, the car he shares with Adrian David, and the two Frenchmen will start from pole position later on today. 17.50. 10 to 6 is the start time, but we'll be on air 20 minutes before that. Jamie Falvey in the Team Virage, number 44 car that he shares with Minaire Stefan, last year's champion in the Ligier European Series, will start from second ahead of Jens Muller in the number 20 high-class racing car with Tommy Foster. And a reminder that what happened in the GT element of the field a little earlier on, a terrific result in the end for the AF Corsa crew, even though their two drivers switched places on the grid late on in that session. So how much does that reveal for an hour and 50 minutes worth of racing later on? Possibly not a great deal because it's two long stints and two different drivers in all of those cars for the action later on today that will form round one of the 2024 Michelin Le Mans Cup. Graham Goodwin, Steph Wentworth and me, Johnny Carver, will, of course, be back for that later on tonight. Bye for now.